Disney Plus has a documentary series that takes a look behind the scenes at the making of Frozen 2. Today, I'm going to be looking at the sixth episode as Frozen 2 finally reaches its world premiere. Stick with me, and I'm going to break it down after the intro. Well, hello there. My name is Jeremy and welcome back to Freeform Disney, where I talk about all aspects of Disney, from the animated movies to the theme parks to Star Wars, Marvel and Pixar and the TV shows and everything else in between. And that is why it's Freeform. And keep coming back every day for new daily content. If you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Today it's on to episode 6 of Disney's Into the Unknown Making Frozen 2. This is it everyone. This episode is called The World Awaits, which means it's time for this docuseries to sadly come to an end. But it'll be bittersweet. So here's what went down. We start out and we're three months to premiere, and hey, we've got all kinds of really cool sculptures going up in the animation building for Frozen 2. We've got this cool Anna Elsa one. The different element monoliths that are outside the forest, those are up in there. And really nice looking one with Kristoff on Sven. Man, those are some cool sculptures. Okay, so what is left to do on the movie at this point when there's this little time left? Well, Chris Buck tells us that they've got to finish the animation, unsurprisingly. There's all the editing of the movie, which we haven't really talked much about prior to this. And then we've got to arrange and score the orchestral version of Show Yourself. Yeah, this late in the game, that hasn't been done yet, which is just how much time it took to get Show Yourself really put together. It's like, whew, dying. Well, so on that note, let's go talk to Dave Metzger, the song co-producer and arranger. So essentially, Kristen and Bobby Lopez, who write the songs and do all that, they make the piano demos, and then those get sent over to Dave, who over at his home up in Oregon, he goes ahead and orchestrates the whole thing and writes the different parts for 95 musicians in an orchestra so it can actually come to life. You, wow. Just to have all that in your head, I is certainly not my expertise right there, but to be able to think of that many different instruments and how they all pair together and work to make a full orchestra. Woo! Dang. 50 strings, 14 brass, 12 woodwinds, and the rest apparently are percussion or rhythm. And you got that all in your head and can think it through, piece out each of those, layer all of these pieces together, then listen to it over on your computer system, and then eventually make the sheet music for the actual musicians to play. Pretty cool. And the only sad part here is that we very briefly saw him here in this episode and then well we moved on so we got to see the orchestra recording for show yourself and because of how late in the process this is apparently neither jennifer lee nor chris buck were able to go to the final orchestra recording had to be peter del vecchio because the other two were busy at meetings just way too much to do in those final weeks and hey adina menzel was also there in the background we got to see her a tiny bit and we got to see how much, just listening to the orchestra once again, how much it affects people like Adina Menzel and Kristen and Bobby Lopez, and always impressive. Getting to finally have everything that you worked so hard on really fully come to life. It's pretty cool. Well, that takes us to two months to premiere. It's now September, and it has taken over 70 animators working on over 1,200 shots to get to this point. And it is the last day of animation. And... Especially once you get to here, it's really starting to feel like a final episode of the documentary series. As we're getting to see some of the people we've gotten to know in the background, just in some of these shots. And the whole thing feels like it's wrapping up now. And it feels like we're just trying to make sure we hit some of those people we got to know a little bit. And just make sure they are somewhere in these shots. We get to look at the final dailies, which, hey, everybody in there is the whole mood. There are selfies being taken around it, and just the happy smiles, etc. And now you've got this interesting thing, Chris Buck earlier reading the Kristen Bell when they like something on the daily, which is a big cowbell. And hey, they've got these bells that are like reindeer harness bells later that they use too. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Everybody definitely in that mindset of being there at the end and just having fun with this. It's really nice. Now, I have to say, especially as we see some of the animation in there, clearly this is not the end of all animation work, just the last day for the animators. 
Which makes me wonder a little bit, does that mean it's the supervisors who do some of the finishing touches at this point and or some of the tech people? I'm not sure because we didn't dig into it, but it's got to be something like that considering it's not really completely done at this point. But at any rate, the animators are done, so we call it the last day of animation. And now, it's time to move on to another person we surprisingly have not talked to at all during the entire course of this. And that's Jeff Drain, who is the editor for Frozen 2. Now, he is one of the first people to go ahead and join up in the production of the movie way, way back. When it's just storyboards and rough dialogue and such. And now, at this point, this is where it really starts to become heavy for him. 14 to 15 hour days, getting up at 3 in the morning and starting work at 4. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> and, heck, again, he's got to go do all that last work on putting the movie together. And he will be there all the way through that final mix where they usually finish it up about two weeks before the wrap party itself. So only a few weeks before the movie actually premieres. And hey, if you thought we got to spend little time with Dave Metzger, we'll spend even less time with good old Jeff, our editor. Just breezing right on through. We don't got time for that here in the finale episode. We gotta keep rolling. Let's go talk about some sound design, because we haven't talked about that yet. And I gotta say, sound design is really cool. I've always loved that kind of work. So we get to see Odin and Jeff, and they're going ahead and using some rocks to make the sound of the rock giants. And oh, I could watch more about how they make these sounds from different things. I, oof. <laughs> I remember watching documentaries for other things, say such as Star Wars, and seeing the Foley artists there, and how they actually made some of that sound, or Ben Burt talking about some of the audio. Anyway, point being, really neat, just the way they go about making those noises. And we also get to see some of the Foley artists over at Skywalker Sound. Now, to be honest, I never truly understood the difference between Foley and sound design. Apparently, according to Odin Benitez, the difference is that Foley is sound that is performed to the film in sync, as opposed to sound design, which will take the sounds and then manipulate it a whole bunch, maybe lengthening it, slowing it down, or speeding it up, in order to then manipulate it enough to get it to work, whereas Foley does it in that time and space. Not saying you couldn't go screw with it afterward, but that's the difference. And that's intriguing. I mean, I've known about different Foley and sound design, and I love it, but I didn't know that before. See, I gotta learn something new each episode, right? Okay, let's keep rolling. We're up to one month until premiere. It is October, and it is now time for the final playback for the directors and the producer. Good old Jennifer Lee, Chris Buck, and Peter Del Vecchio, that is. This is also called the sound mix, or the final mix. All of those names, roughly the same thing right there. Now, this is also the final day for the directors on the movie. After this, they're done. Not that there's a lot of time left till it comes out, but there's still more promotion work and other pieces that get done, but not for the directors anyway. So we get to see the directors watching it, and the post-viewing conversation was great. Jennifer Lee with this comment of, now we breathe. And Piero Vecho, you see him just getting emotional during it, you know, and he has to go, hey, I wasn't prepared to cry at this. I love how much it really means to them and actually getting to see that. Now, I've got to say about this little final playback, the sound mix final mix thing, it really seems to be more of a formality than anything else. Although, I'm guessing that if there was anything that, say, the three of them really found super off, that it could probably still be fixed at this point. But I imagine that would also be very odd at this stage of the game, that something would be that far off that they would feel the need to just say, HALT EVERYTHING FIX THAT! Especially when everybody's of the mindset that, hey, this is it. This is just watching the movie as it is. So who knows? Maybe at most a couple minor notes that might get improved upon. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. That's the movie right there. So we keep jumping forward. And now we're up to five days until the premiere. It is November 2nd, 2019. This is the wrap party. We need to go check in on a few of our people that we've gotten to know and see them one last time. So we're seeing people get dressed up. We get to see good old Brittany Lee, our visual development artist, David Surovic, our technical animation supervisor, and Alexander Snow and Mallory Walters, our animators. And it's cool to get to see them one last time in here. And in case that wasn't enough, we got a few more people to check in on when we head over to the wrap party just outside of it. And there's all kinds of people we see, and I'm not going to keep naming them. But it's really nice to be checking in on them once more, and it definitely really gives this documentary that feel of a finale episode. Just bringing things full circle and bringing everybody back in. Kind of our chance to say goodbye, essentially. Until Frozen 3, that is. Yeah. Because we're, we're going to bring you guys back on Frozen 3, I hope. 
<laughs> well, that's it. It's just a big love fest, and everybody's so happy to see everyone else around and how many people it takes to be involved. And you see Peter Del Vecchio busy choking up again in front of everybody. When he gets really emotional, I mean, we've seen him and how nervous he gets on certain things, and just how much he really does get into it, which is nice, too. And now, it's two days to premiere. We pop in just to see a couple little clips. Really, it's a promotion of the movie, and it's our chance to go ahead and bring our four main actors back in and just say hello to each of them one last time. And then we're up to the day of the premiere. It's November 7th, 2019. We watch the Bucks get in their big ol' SUV stretch limo that's over there. And dang, I mean, people are more dressed up today than they were at the rap party. I suppose that makes sense. This is big red carpet Hollywood stuff at this point. And the comments we get from some of our people over there off the red carpet, not nearly as interesting as what we get before. These are the more formulaic comments, which makes sense because they're busy probably talking to interviewer after interviewer after interviewer. You start doing that, and it's not as organic a comment or response as you get at a different point in time. Well, and then it's time for a few last fun things. We get a big montage of Show Yourself from tons of different people around the globe singing in little clips that were probably put online. We get talks from everyone on their last notes or our big people about how it's a big family. They're super proud of everyone and how once you do this and you get all the great reaction, that especially it highlights all the good times that there were in the production, not everything that was super frustrating. And for the very last little clip that we get to see, a very fitting piece to end a documentary series like this on, it's a big shot of the entire production crew outside the animation building. Very nice way to go ahead and close it out. And there you have it. That was it. And I gotta say, this was very much a final episode, no doubt about it. And to be honest, I'll tell you, I was sad that this episode wasn't 10 minutes longer so that we could spend a little more time with, say, the people we buzzed by early on in the episode. We could have spent a little bit more time with Dave Metzger and a little bit more time with our editor and heck, even a little more time with, say, our sound design. But clearly it was not to be. Not this time in this documentary series. Maybe another time. But hey, it was a fitting bit of closure and really nicely done. I gotta say, I'm sad to be done with this docuseries. I really enjoyed the good old Into the Unknown making of Frozen 2. And I'm really hoping this gets done for each of the features that gets made in the future, as I love these bits of getting to see behind the scenes. So, I'm hoping here comes one in the future for good old Rhea and the Last Dragon. Maybe we'll get that late next year after Rhea and the Last Dragon comes out in the early part of the year. Oh, I'm hoping. That would be cool. Time will tell if we get that or not. But I love seeing my behind-the-scenes pieces. I love it so much. Well, congrats and thank you to Jean Marie Condon, Megan Harding, and Amy Astley, and everyone else who went ahead and created this documentary series. A spectacular job. I loved it to pieces. Even if I had a couple issues, I loved the docuseries as a whole, to be sure. And of course, also, thank you to Jennifer Lee, Chris Buck, and Peter Delvecchio, and everyone else in the production for letting us get to see inside your world as you made that movie. Love Frozen 2, warts and all, and dang, it's so cool to get to see behind the scenes, and also get to know some of the people a little bit. So I love this, and I hope it's a new trend. And hey, with that, that's gonna be it. So, one last time, well, what about you? What were your favorite moments from the whole documentary series? And if you could pick one of the previous 57 movies made by Disney Animation to have had a series like this made while it was in production, which one would you choose? And hey, go ahead and let me know down below in the comments. And I'll end up seeing you on my other videos on other subjects here in the future. And as always, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a like, share it with anyone you think will too, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you back here tomorrow for another new episode of Freeform Disney. Have a magical day, and may the Force be with you. Always.